discussing some important questions and answers for different nursing competitive examinations. Listen to our very first question. The day after an amputation, the client begins to hemorrhage from his stump. What action should the nurse take first? Answer the options are. A. Apply a pressure dressing to the stump. B. Place a tourniquet above the stump. C. Notify the physician. D. Apply an ice pack to the stump. And the correct answer is option. B. Place a tourniquet above the stump. Guys, here our next question. 62 A 72 year old male client has a total hip replacement for long standing degenerative bone disease of the hip. When assessing this client postoperatively, the nurse considers that the most common complication of hip surgery is. Answer the options are A. Pneumonia B. Hemorrhage C. Wound infection And the correct answer is option D. Pulmonary embolism Guys, here our next question. 63 The nurse is caring for a client who had a right below the knee amputation. Three days ago, the client complains of pain in the right foot and asks for pain medication. What nursing action is appropriate initially? Answer the options are A. Elevate the stump B. Administer a placebo C. Administer ordered medications D. Encourage the client to discuss his feelings And the correct answer is option C. Administer ordered medications Guys, here our next question. A client who has had an above-the-knee amputation develops a dime-sized bright red spot on the dressing after 45 minutes in the post-anesthesia recovery unit. The nurse should answer the options are A. Elevate the stump B. Reinforce the dressing C. Call the surgeon D. Draw a mark around the site And the correct answer is option D. Draw a mark around the site. Guys, here our next question. How you will interfere to relieve swelling of the lower extremity in a cast for three days now? Answer the options are A. Change the cast. B. Call the doctor. C. Elevate the extremity. D. Give massage. And the correct answer is option C. Elevate the extremity. Guys, here our next question. When the nurse is developing a bowel retraining plan for a client with multiple sclerosis, which measure is likely to be least helpful to the client? Answer the options are A. Limiting fluid intake to 1000 ml per day. B. Providing a high roughage diet. C. Elevating the toilet seat for easy access. D. Establishing a regular schedule for toileting. And the correct answer is option. A. Limiting fluid intake to 1000 ml per day. Guys, here our next question. Diabetic patient with foot gangrene undergone above knee amputation. While the nurse changing the dressing he complains of pain on the same knee which was amputated. What should the nurse do? Answer the options are. A. Inform physician about it. B. Redo dressing to assessment the wound. C. Psychiatry consultation to the patient because he wound above needy give analgesic is needed. And the correct answer is option. Needy give analgesic is needed. Guys, here our next question. In a diabetic patient with foot gangrene undergone above knee amputation he. Complain of pain and swelling at the wound site which is oozing bus and has a bad odor. The physician ordered cephalexin and metronidazole. Which of the following you should do immediately? Answer the options are A. Give cephalexin direct first action. B. Give metronidazole direct first action. C. Do wash on wound with N. Sand put bacitracin. D. Do wash on wound with N. Sand put hydrocortisone. And the correct answer is option. C. Do wash on wound with N. Sand put bacitracin. Guys, here our next question. The physician has prescribed a cleansing enema to a client scheduled for colon surgery. The nurse would place the client. Answer the options are 
A prone, B supine, C left since, left lateral, D dorsal recumbent. And the correct answer is option. C left since, left lateral. Guys, here our next question. At which side of the patient will the nurse stand when inserting a rectal enema? Answer the options are A right side, B left side, C any side, D both sides. And the correct answer is option A right side. Guys, here our next question. While undergoing a soap suds enema, the client complains of abdominal cramping. The nurse should Answer the options are A. Immediately stop the infusion. B. Lower the height of the enema container. C. Advance the enema tubing 2 to 3 inches. D. Clamp the tubing. And the correct answer is option. B. Lower the height of the enema container. Guys, here our next question. The nurse must administer an enema to an adult patient with constipation. Which of the following would be a safe and effective distance for the nurse to insert the tubing into the patient's rectum? Answer the options are A1 2 cm C5.5 6.5 cm B3 4 cm D6.5 8 cm And the correct answer is option D6.5 8 cm Guys here our next question. The nurse in preparing to insert Riley's tube NGT into an infant, the nurse knows that the length of the tube should be taken as following. Answer the options are A. From the nose down to the chin and then to the umbilicus. B. From the nose to the earlobe and then to the xiphoid process. C. From the nose to the mouth to the xiphoid process. D from the nose to the earlobe to the umbilicus. And the correct answer is of B from the nose to the earlobe and then to the xiphoid process. Guys, here our next question. The nurse is caring for a client who has had a chest tube inserted and connected to water seal drainage. The nurse determines the drainage system is functioning correctly when which of the following is observed. Answer the options are a. Continuous bubbling in the water seal chamber. B. Fluctuation in the water seal chamber. C. Suction tubing attached to a wall unit. D. Vesicular breath sounds throughout the lung fields. And the correct answer is option. B. Fluctuation in the water seal chamber. Guys, here our next question. And the nurse is caring for a client who has just had a chest tube attached to a water seal drainage system. To ensure that the system is functioning effectively the nurse should. Answer the options are. A. Observe for intermittent bubbling in the water seal chamber. B. Flush the chest tubes with 30 to 60 ml of NSS every 4 to 6 hours. C. Maintain the client in an extreme lateral position. D. Strip the chest tubes in the direction of the client. And the correct answer is option. A. Observe for intermittent bubbling in the water seal chamber. Guys, here our next question. The nurse enters the room of a client who has a chest tube attached to a water seal drainage system and notices the chest tube is dislodged from the chest. The most appropriate nursing intervention is to Answer the options are A. Notify the physician B. Insert a new chest tube C. Cover the insertion site with petroleum gauze D. Instruct the client to breathe deeply until help arrives. And the correct answer is option. C. Cover the insertion site with petroleum gauze. Guys, here our next question. Which type of isolation category is indicated for patient with tuberculosis? Answer the options are. A. Airborne isolation. C. Reverse isolation. B. Strict isolation. D. Contact isolation. And the correct answer is option. A. Airborne isolation. Guys, here our next question. While attempting to get out of bed, a patient accidentally disconnects the chest tube from the polar evac drainage system. Which of the following actions should the nurse take first? Answer the options are. A. Insert the end of the chest tube in a container of sterile solution. 
B. Clamp the chest tube near the puller evac drainage system. C. Raise the end of the chest tube above the level of the insertion of the chest tube. D. Apply pressure dressing to the chest tube insertion site. And the correct answer is option. A. Insert the end of the chest tube in a container of sterile solution. Guys, here are next question. Which type of isolation category is indicated for a burn patient? Answer the options are. A. Airborne isolation. B. Strict isolation. C. Reverse isolation. D. No isolation required. And the correct answer is option. C. Reverse isolation. Guys, here are next question. Which type of isolation category is indicated for patient with diphtheria? Answer the options are. A. Airborne. B. Droplet. C. Contact. D. Blood. And the correct answer is option. B. Droplet. Guys, here are next question. A 68 years old woman diagnosed with thrombocytopenia due to acute lymphocytic leukemia is admitted to the hospital. The nurse should assign the patient to her. Answer the options are A to a private room so she will not infect other patients and healthcare workers. B to a private room so she will not be infected by other patients and healthcare workers. C to a semi-private room so she will have stimulation during her hospitalization. D to a semi-private room so she will have the opportunity to express her feelings about her illness. And the correct answer is option. B to a private room so she will not be infected by other patients and healthcare workers. Guys, here are next question. A nurse who begins to administer medications to a client via a nasogastric feeding tube suspects that the tube has become clogged. The nurse should take which safe action first. Answer the options are A. Aspirate the tube. B. Flush the tube with warm water. C. Prepare to remove and replace the tube. D. Flush with a carbonated liquid such as cola. And the correct answer is option. A. Aspirate the tube. Guys, here are next question. Which of the following instructions is appropriate for the nurse to give to a female client who complains of abdominal upset after cholecystectomy operation? Answer the options are. A. Increase fluid intake. B. Avoid fatty meals. C. Increase protein intake. D. Daily exercise. And the correct answer is option. B. Avoid fatty meals. Guys, here are next question. Which of the following pulses should be checked before administrating digoxin? Answer the options are. A. Apical pulse. B. Radial pulse. C. Femoral pulse. D. Dorsalis pedis pulse. And the correct answer is option. A. Apical pulse. Guys, here are next question. Which of the following interventions must the nurse take when administrating digoxin to the patient? Answer the options are. A. Give him the medication with a glass of orange juice. B. Check him for signs of hyperkalemia before giving the medication. C. Instruct him to place the medication under the tongue. D. Withhold the medication if his pulse is less than 60 beats per minute. And the correct answer is option. D. Withhold the medication if his pulse is less than 60 beats per minute. Guys, here are next question. The nurse must withhold digoxin from a patient if his pulse rate is. Answer the options are. A. Less than 45 per meter. B. More than 60 per meter. C. Less than 60 per meter. D. More than 100 per meter. And the correct answer is option. C. Less than 60 per meter. Guys, here are next question. Nurse is assessing the client for possible evidence of digitalis toxicity. The nurse acknowledges that which is included in the signs and symptoms for digitalis toxicity. Answer the options are. A. Pulse, heart, rate of 100 beats per minute. B. Pulse of 72 with an irregular rate. 
C pulse greater than 60 beats per minute and irregular rate D pulse below 60 beats per minute and irregular rate. And the correct answer is option D pulse below 60 beats per minute and irregular rate. Guys, here our next question. Newly admitted client takes digoxin 0.25 mg per day. The nurse knows that the serum therapeutic range for digoxin is. Answer the options are A 0.1 to 1.5 nanograms per milliliter. B 0.5 to 2.0 nanograms per milliliter. C 1.0 to 2.5 nanograms per milliliter. D 2.0 to 4.0 nanograms per milliliter. And the correct answer is option B 0.5 to 2.0 nanograms per milliliter.